By the way, Rachel, how much is our little pleasure cruise going to cost me? A hundred. A hundred dollars, huh? I don't think so. A hundred dollars. That's what I told you when you picked me up. Now, I know that's what you said, but I didn't sign a contract. I thought for some reason there'd be a little bargaining room. Bargaining room? Yeah. I thought that number was just an estimate, you know, a number that you were sort of hoping for. Because I've got a number in the back of my head that I was sort of hoping for, too. We can talk it over like two adults, can't we? Find a number that suits the both of us. You can't bargain, can't you? I mean, you don't have a pimp or nothing, right? No. Well, come on, let's bargain. I don't bargain. Doesn't look to me like you have much choice. No. Come on. I'm reasonable. A hundred. I would have thought you'd start a little bit lower by now. I want a hundred. What can you afford? Well, it depends on what I'm going to get. Everything. That sounds good. Now, how do I know what I'm going to get is the good stuff? You know. No. I don't know anymore. How many guys have you fucked? I don't know. See, that's bad. Any potential buyer will always be interested in the mileage. You been doing this long? When I need to. When you need to, huh? Why don't you turn around? Let me see what you've got in the trunk. No spare. And there never will be. How much? Ten bucks. Bastard. I may go up. We're bargaining, remember? I don't know why I ever listened to you. You're the cheapest prick I've ever met. Okay, look. Twelve bucks. Take me home, Mike. <laughs> no. Go on, I want to go home right now. I'm not going any place. What gives you the right to treat me the way you do? You gave me the right when you got in my car. What was I supposed to do? I needed the money. I told you how much I needed it when I got in the car. You opened the door. Is this is money you need? For what? It's none of your business. I just need it, okay? Well, I suppose you wouldn't be a whore if you didn't need the money. Don't call me that. That's what you are. I am not a whore. You are a whore. Rachel, that is what you are, a whore. Look, I don't care if you hate me. I'm just telling it like it is. Now, what do you need this money for? Nothing. You doing drugs? Now you're my father. Suppose there's some crack dealer knocking on your door, huh? Why don't you just go fuck him for the money? It's no dealer. I just need it for the rent. Great. You're on the street because you need a hundred bucks for rent? I need 85 for rent. The rest I wanted to buy paint and food with. My God, Rachel, doesn't this suck? I know how you could get a thousand dollars for a night's work. Fuck Would off, you... Mike, all right? So how have you been? I've missed you. Oh, I've been great. Except I've still got to pick the Jaguar up from the shop and the kids from school. But other than that, everything's fine. It doesn't have to be that way. Oh, it doesn't? Well, why didn't you tell me how it's supposed to be? How is it supposed to fucking be? You could be rich. We've been through this before. You can have unlimited supplies. You can have your own studio, plenty stop of money. It, okay? I'm not gonna stop. You're gonna stop. You're gonna stop living like this because you don't have to. You've got too much damn talent Listen, to. Do you want me or what? Yes. Yes, I want you. Oh, then. Shut up. Bad, Mike. It's just a cold, empty room. It's like a cave. You'd scream and nothing would happen. You'd just get swallowed up by these walls. 
Rachel, everything in the world isn't a metaphor for life. Oh, it is. <laughs> That's not true. Don't tell me it isn't true. I know. A man is never as happy as when he believes his own lies. It's the only time he can find peace. How do you find peace? I don't have to find peace. I have peace. You're at peace with being a hooker? I'm at peace with who I am. I've never jeopardized my artistic integrity because it's the only thing I have. It's the only thing I trust. Because art can't lie. How can you say that? Of course art can lie. No, it can't. It exists in total purity, relieved of you or me. Or anyone else who can fuck it up. Rachel, how do you do it? How do I do what? How do you work? You hardly have enough money for paint. Well, I work until I'm out, and then I hit the street. Then I sit in my apartment, paint until the next time I need materials. Till the next time you need rent or, or food. What's the point? What are you getting at? I don't like to see you like this. I can get you anything you need. The price is too high. For nothing. You know what I mean. You need money. You need my money. Why don't I just go ahead and get you everything else? Listen, I slept with you. I deserve my money. I might as well have mowed your lawn. You keep asking me how I do it. You keep cutting me down. How do you do it, Mike? How the fuck do you do it? How do I do what? I don't understand how it's possible to sell forgeries. I don't understand how you could deal with that. And I don't understand how anyone would want to buy your shit. It's so obvious they're fakes. Is it obvious? Later. How come Cleveland bought a fake Grunewald? That was an exception. You think that was an exception? Because they found out it was a fake a year later? After they spent the million dollars? They wouldn't have a clue to this day if they hadn't gotten lucky. I bet you I could have told them it was a fake the first time I saw it. <sighs> Please. Those hoity-toity art critics wouldn't know an authentic piece if it sucked their dick. How many fakes do you think hang in galleries around the world? I'm sure there are probably a few that have gotten away with it. <laughs> a few? A few people have gotten away with it. Think about how many wars we've had. How many revolutions in the past 200 years. How many fires. There have been more fakes put up in this century than you could ever count. Thousands of them. In my professional opinion, I'd say one out of four pieces hanging in museums are fake. One out of four? Yeah, one out of four. What's the matter? You can't hear? Oh, I hear fine. I just can't believe what I'm hearing. You're crazy. You're more stupid than I could have ever imagined. Don't call me fucking stupid. I know. I've sold my share. There's only so many Monets to go around, but the stupid rich fucks keep asking for more. Now there are no more. They sure keep turning up. <laughs> it's just supply and demand. Fucks with a cash demand, and I supply all the way to the fucking bank. That is funny. Painting, a masterpiece, grows stronger with each time you see it. Whereas a fake undoubtedly grows more and more boring with each tired viewing. That's something that you'd never know. Of course I would. Why do you say that? I say that because you've grown up around fakes. I have not. Yes, you have. I've grown up around wonderful art. I agree 100% that it's wonderful art. All I'm saying is that the person who painted most of it isn't necessarily whose name rests in the little right-hand corner. All this time, you've grown closer to beautiful works of art. Beautiful works that just happen to be fake. A fake does not have presence. You shut up already with that metaphysical bullshit. It's just paint on canvas, that's it. There's no funky holy aura to protect it. So, suppose Michelangelo were sitting in this room and he were painting a reproduction of the Mona Lisa. Would you have the balls to go up to him and say, Gosh, that's nice, but it just doesn't have any presence. That was different. He was a great artist. 
Well, do you consider yourself a great undiscovered artist? Yes. If you painted a reproduction, would it suck? I would never paint a reproduction. I have this Chinese friend that does reproductions for me about once a month. Just takes him a few days, and all of a sudden he's got ten thousand dollars in the bank. He's got his first showing coming up in a couple of months. Wouldn't that be nice? I'm really proud of the kid. I'm glad I could help him. I'm sure, you made plenty of money on the kid. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I made money, but the kid made money too. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to have somebody scratch your back for a change? I get it, Mike. I'm not doing it. Why do you live like this? I must. I'd roll over in my grave if a hundred years from now someone painted a reproduction of one of my works. Why I have would... no doubt that they would burn in hell, right alongside you and your <laughs> Chinese friend. Why would anybody ever want to copy one of your works? Nobody in the art world gives a shit about you. I except for me. I care. I don't want to see you die someday in a room full of unwanted paintings. I will be discovered. It may be after I die, but they'll find me. Who wants to live like that? It's a pipe dream. I should never have gotten in the car with you. What are you gonna do when the money runs out? I'll do what I've been doing. I'll hit the street. You fuck a guy for money. You give him something beautiful and fake, no different than me. What are you gonna do when the body runs out? What are you talking about? I'm talking about when nobody wants your old, ragged-out body. What then? Look. What I do now is strictly my business. And when I can't do it any longer, I'll find something else. But right now, it was the easiest way I could get what I need. OK. What I propose is strictly business, too. Fair enough. I'll think of it. Look. Come on for a second. Rachel, I'll make you a deal. If you meet me here two nights a week, there can be any two nights you want, but if you meet me here two nights a week, I'll give you a hundred bucks a night. We have two lovely evenings a week and you have all the money you need. You can paint, do whatever. I'll think about it. What's there to think about? You'll have steady money coming in, a wonderful man to look forward to seeing twice a week. You do make wonderful love, don't you? You sure do. There's something else. What's the catch? The only catch, if you want to call it that, is you can only see me. No more tricking. You have to get off the street. I'm worried about you. I don't want to see you get hurt. That's it? That's all? I just have to see you two nights a week? That's it. Two nights a week and you're set. We have a deal. Honey, will you do me a favor? Anything. Will you make love to me right now? When the morning sun comes up? <laughs> I don't know about that. I want you to make love with me. While the morning sunlight comes streaming through that window. It's starting to sound nice. Sounds nice. Rachel, you gotta tell me what happened with the guy in the Cadillac. Yeah, who is he? Do you know him? Not really. What'd you do for him? Are you hurt? Did he hurt you? Yeah, he hurt me. That no good son of a bitch. What makes him think he can treat a girl like this? We were doing it on concrete. Did you get a good deal? Will you see him again? He wants to be a regular. How much? Two hundred, two times a week. I just have to meet him on 7th of May, 9 o'clock, Tuesdays and Saturdays. So you're going to keep doing this? Will you quit worrying about me?
me? I'll probably hurt him worse. He's my ex-boyfriend. No way. If he had so much money, why'd you leave him? Is he an asshole? Well, when we split, he had no money and yeah, he's an asshole. Do you want me to have Tony talk to him? I can make sure he won't hurt you again. Is he gonna beat him up? No, Tony's good. He'll just have a word with him. You know, make him think twice about hitting you again. Okay? Listen, do me a favor. Tell Tony to kick this guy's ass. He deserves it. Now listen up, guys. We're just gonna have a word with this guy. Let him know he has to treat Rachel with little respect. You know, none of that slamming her around stuff. Why? You saving that for you, Tony? Shut up, dumbass. Listen, just let me do the talking, all right? How we gonna know it's him? He's supposed to be here at 9 o'clock in a black Cadillac. What if he's late? I got some partying to do. <sighs> Let me ask you something. Would you be late if you knew you had Rachel's pussy waiting on you? He's got a point. I hear that. All right, All right. then. My man, can we have a word with you? See, now we happen to be friends with Miss Weldon, and You're I want to. Friends with Rachel? Yeah, and as I was saying. Look, I don't so care what you have to say. Now listen up. I'm trying real hard to be nice about this. Nice about what? Well, you see, we're going to let you know that you're not supposed to rub with Rachel anymore. See, we saw what you did to her, and let me tell you something. It ain't going to happen again, my friend. First of all, you're not my friend. Second, what Rachel and I do is our own business, capiche? Get out of the way. Look, she doesn't need street punks like you for friends. Don't talk to me that way. <laughs> hey, she doesn't need shit like you pulling her down, all right? Now get the fuck out of here. Hold the on way. a second. <laughs>
Hey, what are you doing? What does it look like? Hey, I didn't say you could use that stuff. You said I could make myself at home. Right, I said make yourself at home, not use all my paint. What else was I supposed to do? There's nothing else here. Why did you put all this stuff here? Is it just so you could fuck with me? Look, this is my warehouse. I store all of my shit here. Well, put that shit down, bitch! Don't talk to me like that! Look, I'm paying you to fuck me, not paint for me. Now, do you want the job or not? I can always get somebody else. Yes, I want the job. Then come over here and give me a kiss. I didn't charge you for tonight. Would you let me have this <laughs> canvas and this paint? <laughs> no. This stuff isn't worth two hundred dollars. Look, this is rare shit. There's somebody got to bring it to tomorrow. What are you going to do? What do you mean? What? Are, what are you going to reproduce? You expect me to tell you? Why not? Because I don't need you blabbing all over town about what's going to turn up at Sotheby's. I wouldn't say anything. I, I'm just interested to know. Just tell me. I won't say anything. Look, all I can tell you is this. Painting disappeared during World War I, and I think I know where to find it. Some Chinese guys are pop. <laughs> yeah. What's he going to paint? What do you mean? What he's reproducing? Yeah. Can't tell you. You wouldn't know it anyway. But it's going to auction for more than a million, I guarantee it. It's going to go for that much? Of course, that's not how much I get. That's three sales down the line from me. I get a good price for it. Suddenly, a few months later in Zurich, voila, the lost masterpiece has been found. It's that easy. No, it's not easy at all. As a matter of fact, it's very difficult. It's a secret operation. Oh, really? Yes, really. Are there any pictures of this painting? All there is is an old black and white picture of the King of Bavaria or some fucking place. It's hanging on the wall behind his head. Can't see it very well. You know, it's sad the world had to lose such a beautiful painting, but thanks to me, the world can have her back. Does it look real? Perfect. It's awesome. It'll probably be done in two more days. How do you make it look authentic? <laughs> That's the most crucial step. We can make a painting look 100, 150, 200 years old in an afternoon. You gotta be careful to age the piece exactly, though. After you take the canvas off the frame, you vote. Then you what? I can't tell you. You can trust me. You said it yourself. You can't trust anyone. There's no way I'm gonna tell you any of this unless you want to be a part of it. I'm an idiot for telling you this much. Come on. We know everything about each other. Mm. I trust you. <laughs> Fuck you. Do you have to play like a whore? I don't believe you. It must be fucking ingrained. I don't believe you. What don't you believe? I don't believe how you've changed. You used to be nice. Jesus. Now you're a jerk to everyone. You're constantly paranoid. I've changed. What about you? What happened to the young idealist I used to know? Where do I find you on the street taking a break between cocks? Girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. You don't have to do this. And you don't have to sell fortress, but you do. It's better than what you do. And I'm rich. And I'm happy. Sure. All the tricks you can handle and money to boot. Stop talking like that. No, I'm not going to stop talking to you like that. Not until you're sick of it. Well, I am sick of it. I'm sick of you. Why did you sell out, Mike? You were good. Shut up. You're, you're serious. You were really good. You were a really good painter. And now look at you. You probably haven't touched a brush in years. You couldn't take it. You couldn't handle it. You sold out. The struggle was too much for you. 
And now I have to listen to people talk about you. We've secretly replaced this painting with Forge's crystals. <laughs> they can't prove they're fucking fake. Doesn't matter. They all know you're a fraud. You've propositioned every artist in this city. Now look at you, you're on for seconds. I told you no already, or did you, didn't you hear me? Mikey. Mikey, do it. How are you doing, Jim? Hey. I want you to meet a friend of mine. This is Mr. Davis Parks. Down from Charleston. Business. How do you do, Davis? Parks. Nice one, Jim. Mikey. Davis came to me. Business proposition, okay? Now, it needs a third party, so... I thought you might be interested. One of my biggest faults is I'm always interested. Um, can I get you something? Yeah, I'll have a scotch single wall. No ice cream. Um, Glenn, you Yeah, that's fine. So what is it? It's a painting. <laughs> That's right up my alley. That's it's right here. <laughs> uh, what kind of painting is it? It's a mané. A mané. Right. A mané. You see, Davis was contacted by a mutual friend of ours, okay? Who says he happened upon this painting a week ago. Now it seems last week there was a fire at an estate out on Long Island, and amid the confusion of the flames and the fire, the painting wound up missing. But nobody seems to know if it's been destroyed or not. This was the Watson's estate, wasn't it? That's right. How do you know? It's my business to know. Thank you. There was it destroyed or no? Happily, one of my contacts had safe and sound but lately he's been under scrutiny so he wants to get rid of it fast so you two are going to buy it <laughs> no i hope we're going to buy it you see the watsons have posted a one million dollar reward for the return of the painting no questions asked what's your boy asking six hundred thousand thirds yes cash yes i'll keep the painting for a couple of weeks you know until things cool down <laughs> Excuse the pun. <laughs> and then Jack here will deliver it to the Watson. I'll take it. Davis, will you excuse my frankness? Of course. Jack, how long have you known this man? Well, Davis and I met earlier this week. Earlier this week. You've known him a week and you've grown close enough to him to go in on a $600,000 painting that's been stolen. Mike, Davis was introduced to me by Vincent Tuccini, okay? Now it's on his association that I have entrusted my own. Vincent is a strong man, very. Yes, he is. Mike, we have to know whether you're gonna go in or not. For 200. Yes. If this is a sure thing, how come you're not going in on it together? I can go in for 200, Jack can go in for 200, 300, no. No. We can't make it. No, we need you to go in. It may take some time. Time is the one thing we don't have. Vince is already turning down bids of more than 600 because of this deal. It won't last. Jack, do you trust this man? Do you realize that all the people say about you, how they talk about you? It can't be any worse than the way that you talk about me. 
Yes, I can. Much worse. I know what they're saying, and I don't care. Yes, you do. I'm stronger for it. You're weaker. You're wanting, and you're lost. Oh, is that so? Yes. If you would have come with me, you'd have everything you wanted by now. You'd have your own studio, you'd have a, a nice apartment instead of that shithole you live in, and you'd probably have a reputation for your own work. I know what I do doesn't appeal to you, but you could have done it for a year and quit. You'd have a real life. We might have even stayed together. <laughs> Another one of your fantasies. It's not a fantasy. We loved each other. I didn't want you. You wouldn't leave me alone. It's okay. I liked it. That was before I knew what you were. I thought you were an artist, not a thief. I am not a thief. I am the opposite of a thief. I give the world what it doesn't have. What it needs. What it wants. I bring the world beautiful art. All you bring is misery. What do you bring forth? You're too poor to paint. I'm offering you freedom. Nothing less. How do you know what I deserve? I never stopped loving you. When I heard the rumor about you turning to the streets, I freaked out. It took me a week to find you, and then I sat in my car for three days, watching you leave the corner with asshole after asshole. God, I can still see their fucking faces. Do you have any idea what it's like to watch someone you love degrading themselves like that? I thought I was going to go insane watching. I couldn't stop imagining you in some flea bag hotel getting screwed by some scumbag you don't even know. I wanted to kill every asshole that drove up. I almost killed every asshole that drove up there. I thought about hauling ass and just leaving you to rot. I couldn't do it. I love you, and I've been without you for so long, I can't take it. And do you think I enjoy doing something that you can't stand? I hate it. I wish I could be some big successful artist to make you proud, but I can't. I can't do it. Because I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough, and I know it. Now I'm doing all that I can do. It's all I know. Just don't hate me for it. I don't hate you. At least I can afford to have you for two nights a week. It's better than what I had before, nothing but empty hopes and memories. I don't believe a word you've said. Believe it, because it's the truth. I love you. Cut the crap. It's all lies. It's the truth. Lies, lies. I love you. I'll give you the money. Just stay off the street. You're lying to me. You don't love me. How long is it going to be before you start punishing me for my past? I don't care about your past. I want you to make a clean start. You want me to make a clean start? Your deal is that I fuck you two nights a week. And you want me to make a clean start. All you want is your own personal whore, you lying swine. Look, I'll pay you the money. I don't care if you have sex with me. Just stay off the fucking street. What if I said I liked tricking, huh? What if I said I liked it? The strange interludes, the dirty, ugly men who make me do disgusting things. Do you have any idea the kind of things I get to do for men? Do you? Oh, it's fun. Now look at yourself and the way you treat me. You've tried to cut me down. Every piece of pride I've managed to keep you cut down. I want to take care of you. I don't believe you. Believe it, because it's the truth. If you'll come back to me, I'll treat you like a lady. Well, I'm not, okay? Are you fucking satisfied? I'm a whore, do you hear me? Are you listening? I'm a whore. I'm the lowest scum of the earth. That's what you wanted to hear, right? A confession? Well, I confess. I've done the most immoral things for money. Do you hear me? And I can't take it anymore. Rachel. I love you. I never left. I've always been here. I found you. Make a clean start. I take care of you. We're gonna be together, stable and happy. Don't tell me lies. I tell lie. me the truth. I love you. Don't scare me. Hold me, Mike. Don't know what happened. It's 
gonna make a big splash in the art world. Rachel Weldon is here. What a dream, what a stupid fucking dream. I'm Rachel Weldon. Grant was supposed to put me on the list. Hey, Rachel. Hey. Hi. Come over here. How you doing? Fine. You look fantastic. Thank you. Did you get uh, in okay? Everything's fine? Uh, can I get you something to drink? What do you like? Red wine? Better be fine. Red wine. Hey guys, help me out. Hey guys, this is Rachel. Introduce yourselves, okay? Right Hi. 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 This is the same as Basquiat. I mean, right. too little, too late. You're right. I mean, sometimes you have to distinguish yourself. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I think that's the whole point here. Whether or not you have a uh, toilet seat under a piece of glass or a purple sign that says pigs on it, who's the vendor? Where's the target? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, we're leaving you out? It's just shop talk. Hey, don't worry. Rachel is one of the most exceptional artists on the scene today. Really? I wouldn't say that. So you're up on this? Yeah. What do you think about rat, rat, rat? It's rubbish. <laughs> it's rubbish. <laughs> I like that. I totally agree. I'm just hypersensitive to technique, and I don't see any technique in that work at all. You're a classicist. Perhaps. Here, here. Here's to classical work. Did you try the hors d'oeuvres when you came in? Yes. I have a wonderful caterer. She really knows how to put magic things in these events that I have. This is Chelsea. I bought her at Christie's. How much? 178,000. I had an offer of 500. She's beautiful. Worth every penny. I think so. It's really nice to see a collector with great taste. I think that's more rare than the art. There are good works out there, but you have to know how to look for them and when to buy and not get too attached when you have to sell it. What about Chelsea? I'm gonna get more. She hasn't climaxed yet. <laughs> Where do you find the pieces? All over. In attics, and storage rooms. But paintings never get thrown away. They get passed down from generation to generation. A hundred years ago, a family who was wealthy may have decorated their home with lovely works. Then the paintings go out of style. They take them off the wall, and put them in the attic. A lot of times those paintings are still there. Or they may be hanging over some old lady's bureau and she doesn't even have a clue as to how much they're worth. You're fascinating. Really? Oh, where were we, huh? Do you have any work in town? Yes, back at my place. May I see it? So, here we are. <laughs> I do apologize, it's a bit of a mess. This is an artist's studio. Yeah, all the junk. Oh, nice work. That's some of my early stuff. I did all that at college. This, this here is my latest. That's oh, what I, I like best. I see the classical in that. Yeah. Do you want a drink? Sure, scotch. I've only got beer. I'll take a beer. Okay. Yeah, so it's a color field you laid down, isn't it? Yeah, it takes me about a week to do that. Um, and then I finish the rest whenever I get the inspiration. You want to get high? Sure. Cool. Which one do you like? Uh, they're nice, but that's a find, just like you. Do you really think so? Oh, yeah. You need to get your work seen. Have you sold any? One to my uncle. Your uncle? <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to get your pictures out there. I mean, it might be difficult at first, but people need to know who you are. I know some critics who would go crazy over your work. A little bit of publicity, darling, and you're on your way. It's really that simple. Uh, it's simple if you're a good artist, but if you suck, it's a little more difficult. I have to really bullshit more. What are you doing? What do you mean? I thought you came to buy one of my paintings. Uh. He didn't even care. Finally, after what seemed like a thousand years, he finished and tells me I look pretty. What a stupid little dream.
Mikey. Good to see you. How you doing? Good. How are you, David? Right. Joey, why don't you get that from Mr. Florence? Hey, no, that's, a, that's okay. I think I'm going to hold on to it for a second. I don't care. So when does the big guy come in? He just called. He'll be here in a minute. Can I use your phone? Yes. my man. <laughs> yeah. Good, thanks. Vince is coming in right now. Welcome, Vincenzo. Hello, Jack. Hey. Dave. Hello, Vince. <laughs> Gentlemen, the recently lost Manette. I think we have a deal, gentlemen. Beautiful. I have a plane to catch, gentlemen. Twice what he lost today. Yeah, but why was when Davis collects his reward in two weeks? That's... I'll tell him that the Watsons insurance company reneged on the reward. There was no clear evidence as to what happened to the painting. <laughs> it's just another lost masterpiece. Look, Rachel, 
Michael put Davis in touch with a black market dealer, okay? He'll make money. We made money. Everybody's happy. Believe it, baby. He's the best in the business. Okay, okay, look, we still have to straighten this place up and make it look like we've never been here, okay? Oh, uh, first things first, where's the money? Ah. <laughs> okay, Jackaroo. Here's 30 G's for you and Mama. Thank you, sir. Okay. And Vincenzo. Another 30 grand for Thank you. Thank you. And the rest comes with me to Switzerland. Is this the August issue? You look crazy. <laughs> oh my god, that is. <laughs> What's new, pussycat? I love you. What's the toast? <laughs> to art? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. To art. Salute. Do you miss London? Sure. I don't miss the food, though. This was great. Oh, well, I'm sure you can't get a good calzone in Piccadilly. Piccadilly, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> You're such an idiot. I can't help it. We used when... to have a lot of fun, though, didn't we? We always do. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's wrong? Nothing. Rachel. Crystal, how you doing? Long time no see. I'm not Crystal. Come on. Doing? Would you please leave? <laughs> please go away! Get the fuck! Rachel! Don't be sorry. Shh. It's okay. I'm fine, okay? I'm fine. I used to say my name was Crystal. I never want to hear that name again. Look, I love Rachel. Crystal doesn't exist anymore. She's like a character in a play. After the show's over, the character disappears, and all that's left is the real you. Do you right. understand? It's not real. It was just an act, right? <laughs> right, right, absolutely. Okay. Come on, let's go home. Well, this is where we start with research. It's crucial that you carefully time the piece that you're working on. In order to make the most money, you have to do an artist that's hot. These fat cats don't really care much about the artist. They just want something that's trendy and expensive. That's why you end up with these absurd bidding wars. And believe me, these guys want to win. I don't care what anybody says, but Dr. Gachet is not worth $88 million. It's just a fucking piece of cloth with paint on it, right? Some idiot paid 88 million bucks for it while there were people starving right outside the door. Do these guys know much about art? Not really. The only guys at the auctions that know much about art are these sort of artistic pilot fish. You know, they swim around kissing ass, they feed on the leftovers. They set up the shows, they make a little money on the rich guys, and they move on. Do they end up buying many fakes? Yeah, they sure do. I don't imagine they care very much, though. I mean, they just want to go to the club and say, I spent $2 million on this painting, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why I don't care rolling them. I don't know how much longer this is going to remain the popular sport of billionaires, so I want to make as much money as I can and move on, maybe open up my own gallery. You want to go legit? All the way. What about me? Well, I want you right there beside me. If we make a couple of big kills, we're there. Who's your middle man? Well, there's a few different people that I sell to, but I'm thinking about going for it. What do you mean? I want to auction a piece myself. And make the whole bundle? <laughs> exactly. I've been letting pieces go for next to nothing, and then all of a sudden they're going for a million dollars someplace else. There's never a hassle. If you're good and you're careful, there's never a problem. I hope you're right. Look, I know I'm right. Now, if we want to make money, we have to cause a little stir in the community, build a little excitement, you know, publicity. Nothing gets publicity like a newly discovered work, something that's never been seen before, a lost masterpiece. Plus, if there's no record of it, we can't be fucked by another one turning up in Trinidad, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I imagine you probably want to do your own work, not just a copy. Yeah, I'd much prefer to do something new. Well, it can be yours completely. You just have to sign somebody else's name to it. But that way you can take a little more pride in it. Now, what we'll do is we'll start with a master sketch that was never fully completed. We put out the word about a new discovery. We make some bullshit story up about how we tracked it down somewhere. Then we auction it off to the highest bidder. Instant millionaires. Then what the fuck? We open up a highbrow gallery on Fifth. It's that easy? You bet. Well, what are we going to do? Well, who would you like to do? I don't know. I like a lot of different artists. Well, who do you paint like? Who have you been influenced by? Ever heard of Martin? Yves Martin? Of course I have. I love his work. <laughs> you paint like him. Sort of. Has to be a little bit more than sort of. Take a look at this.
god, I've never seen this before. I didn't think you would have. It's just an old forgotten sketch. I found it in an antique shop. I could do this. <laughs> I know you could. No, my, I mean, I, I could really do this well. It's just my style. I've been trying to tell you that. Oh, wow. Brilliant. How do we start? OK, this is the deal. It's a very complicated procedure, but when we're done, nobody can tell it's a fake. We have to start with a lot of the materials that were available to the original artist. I have them all. Now, oh, can you mix your own paint? Yeah. But all those canvases are new, though. I know that, but the painting isn't going to stay on the canvas. It's going to be on an antique piece of wood. Where is it? Look, don't worry about that now. We won't transfer it until it's finished. How the hell are we going to transfer it, Mike? This isn't going to work. Look, it'll work. It's very difficult to do, and I'll show you later. We don't have to worry about that now. I'm worried. Basically, what we're going to do is this. We're going to take the canvas off the frame very carefully, crack the paint layers a bit. Then what we'll do is we'll adhere the front of the painting to some paper with melted wax. We take a razor blade, we'll carefully remove the canvas from the paint. We'll take that, we'll glue it, put it on the antique piece of wood, melt the wax, remove the paper. After that, you've got an antique looking painting on an antique piece of wood, and nobody can tell the difference. There's no way. Look, I've done it dozens of times. You do your work and I'll do mine. So, Martin's hot, huh? He's lukewarm. Collectors are just starting to go for his work. He's early 20th century, you know, but by the time this thing comes out, he's going to be on fire. There's no telling how much we're going to get for this. Could I change this? I mean, you can do whatever the fuck you want. It's your project. Just make it look real. Great. I love you, honey. I know. What do you say that after this is over, we go out here, huh? Well, we've both got a lot of work to do. We can get something to eat. That would be nice. Why don't you just go ahead and get started, OK? So what am I supposed to do, leave you alone? Not unless you want to be raped mercilessly. Well, that sounds like a delicious proposition. Later, huh? We'll have an evening of deranged debauchery. <laughs> OK, you can mix all your own paints, right? So yeah. you're all set? I'm all set. Oh, shit, I almost forgot. Listen, the white paint that Martin used had trace elements of silver in it. That's one of the ways they test to find fakes. So to foil that, what we do is we take a silver coin, like this 1962D, Take a file, powder up our paint a bit. We're all set. Cool. Anything else? No, that's it. OK, honey. Why don't you run along and I can finish this? OK, give me a kiss first. Look, I'll be back around 7. Think masterpiece.
Sorry, I didn't realize it would take this long. It takes time. It has to look perfect. Will be perfect. <clears throat> Hell, it looks pretty close to me. When I'm finished, I don't think I could tell that Marta didn't do it. I just wish I could sign my name to it. Well, after this, you can sign all your own paintings. I guess you're right. I know I'm right. We're gonna be millionaires. It's kind of like winning the lottery, huh? <laughs> Believe it when I see it. Well, start believing. There happens to be a little article coming out in Arts and Antiques this month about our little painter. Dropped a couple of hits with the dealers. I'm leaving the country to track down a strong lead on an undiscovered Martin. What do you that think we should excite... get for it? At least a million. Realistic figures are a lot more. No way. A Martin isn't worth that much. It will be. Just watch. Millions of dollars are going to be thrown around for your lovely work. So hard to imagine. Try imagining vacations in Monte Carlo or San Moritz. Penthouse on Fifth. Home in Florida, whatever you want. We could do more of these. I mean, I could keep doing them. We could make billions. <laughs> it's something to consider, but you have to space them out. You can't flood the market. Maybe in a few months we could do something else. This will be finished today. What's the next step? What do you have left to do? Just a few touch-ups. Well, when it's done, don't overpaint it. Just leave it alone. I'll know when it's finished. How are we going to make it look old? Is it hard? No. First, we have to let it dry for a few days so the paint's nice and solid. Then I'll take the canvas off the frame and run it over the edge of a table, crack the paint layers a bit. And what I'll do is I'll wipe it down with a solution of turpentine and soot, let it seep into the cracks, apply some varnish, it'll look a hundred years old. It'll be a little dirty, a little yellow, but it will certainly look authentic. And that works. Can't wait to see it finished. Oh, it's gonna look good. Real nice. Mm. Can't believe everything that's happened. I really think it's my greatest work. I feel inspired. That's a silly word. No, I feel more than inspired. Looking at this painting, I'd say inspired is a good word. After we finish, what's the first thing you want to do? I don't know. We could take a trip. Maybe. Where would you like to go? I don't know. I know some place we could go. You do? We could go and visit my mum. What are you talking about? Well, I want to go and see my mum, and maybe you could come with me. I don't want to go see your mum. I don't even know your mum. Oh, Mike, you'd love her. I haven't seen her in ages. I spoke to her on the phone. She wants me to come home. I told her all about you, and she's dying to meet you. Why does she want to meet me? I told her how much I loved you. How much you've saved my life. Yeah. No, it's true. I don't know what I'd be doing if it wasn't for you. Yeah, that's true. And she said she'd fix up the spare room for you, really nice. It's great, it's got a lovely view over the... Wait, sea. what's all this talk about a spare room? My mom's really old-fashioned. She doesn't believe that we should sleep together until we're married. Married? No one's talking about marriage. I was just... Forget what you were talking about. You love me, don't you? Of course I do. I'm just a little shaken up about all this talk about your mom and stuff. I'm not ready to start hearing this shit. All I'm saying is that if we make some money on this painting, I want to go and see my mom. I haven't seen her in ages. I want her to be proud of me. Is that so terrible? No, that's beautiful. Just a little shaken up is all. So where's this at? Lake Wales. You'd love it. <laughs> Great, a little fucking green acres, huh? Yeah, that's exactly it. I love you. Great. Tell me you love me. No. Tell me you love me. Will you just finish the fucking painting? What did you just say? 
He said, why don't you do some work? We've both got a lot of work to do before we can start talking about going on a trip. You just want me to finish the painting? What are you saying? You don't give a shit about me. That's not true. You're lying to me. You're going to leave me. <laughs> of course not. I'm not going to do that. You're going to leave me when I finish this painting. How do I know you're not? Look, look, I'm not, okay? I promise. You promise? You fucking promise? I don't know. What do you want me to say? What is the correct answer? What have I done? You haven't done nothing. I've been slaving over a fucking counterfeit for a liar. You're a fucking liar. You're going to sell this for a million and leave me, aren't you? Aren't you? No, of course not. I can't believe I've fallen for this again. Lies. I've compromised myself. Look at what I've done. I'm going to sell my painting with someone else's name on it. No, I'm the liar. My art isn't my art anymore. I've got nothing. Nothing. How could you do this to me? I haven't done anything to you. Now, what the fuck has gotten into you? What's gotten into me? Oh, that's a good one. What the hell is wrong? Why are you acting so weird? Weird? That's a very good way to describe what I'm feeling. What the weird. fuck is wrong with you? I'm pregnant. You're what? I'm pregnant. Great. Now what do you expect me to fucking do? A little bit of love would be nice, but I suppose that's too big a job for you to pull off. Listen. Look, you're freaking out over nothing, okay? Everything's gonna be just fine. I, I want to meet your mom and everything, but th th this is a big shock. I, I lost my head for a second. Do me a favor. Anything. You love me for me, right? Nothing else. Nothing else. And you want to be with me? Yes. Haven't I proven that? Not enough. What can I do to prove it? You can give my baby a name. You mean give our baby a name? Yes. Yes. Our baby. I can do that. And there's something else. What is it? What is it, honey? You can let me destroy this painting. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. I'm serious. It's as good as done! You're gonna sell it as a counterfeit. That's my soul. If you love me, give me back my soul. Don't throw it away. I'm not! I'm gonna sell it for a million bucks and then we'll be set up. You have enough money. Don't be greedy with my soul. We can make it like we are. We could go straight. Don't do this to I, me. I'm not doing anything to you. I mean, you agree. Don't fuck me up like this. Don't do this to me. I'm not doing anything to you. It's what you're doing to me. We have a baby to consider. I want a life with you. A real life. Rachel, quit fucking around. Take one step closer, and I'll slash this to shreds. Don't be stupid. Tell me okay? you love me. I love you. I don't believe you! Put down that knife. Or else what? You'll fucking shoot me. Why can't you love me for me, Mike? No strings attached. I love you! If you love me, you'll put down that knife! And everything's gonna be okay! Put the gun down, Mike. Put down the knife. I know. And I'll shoot you right in the fucking belly if you don't put that knife down. I'm doing this for our own good. Our own good. Rachel? Rachel, look at me. Look at me! We have enough money to get married or something, okay? But we'll never make it if you fuck us up like this. I've got nothing left. No! No! I won't leave you. I've told you that. I love you. You won't leave me. Don't leave me. Tell me you love me. Don't lie to me. I love you. Now please, just put the knife down. Come here. Do this to me. I'm sorry. 
Why do you put me through this? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to open bidding in a moment. But before I do, I want to read to you an abridged sample from one of the great masters. What a piece of work is man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculty. In form and moving, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. And yet it seems to me no other thing than a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. When mankind has long since ceased to exist on this planet, what will be our, our legacy? How will we be remembered? As colossal makers of war? As savage defilers of our planet? Or will we be remembered for what is truly sacred amongst us? For Mozart, Shakespeare, for Michelangelo, Nijinsky, for Ibsen, Nietzsche, Picasso, Plato, or Da Vinci. I prefer to hope the latter. Mr. Florence, we were overjoyed to have you here with us today. <laughs> Thank you. Are you nervous? A bit. a bit. I'd be a bit nervous too if I were about to make a lot of money. I think it's time. We gather again with your astute few, hand-picked for your discretion and for your fortunes. In the past, we have been pleased to offer you unique works by the masters, unknown and unavailable to the mainstream art world. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you Mr. Michael Florence. Today, it is my special privilege and pleasure to unveil for you Martin's lost masterpiece, the Christina. As always, all transactions conducted here are strictly confidential and strictly cash. I will begin the bidding at $500,000. And my bid 500. 500, thank you. 550. 550, thank you. 600. 600. 650, and my bid 650,000. 650. 700,000, and my bid 700,000. 700, 750. 750, thank you. 800,000. Am I bid eight hundred thousand dollars? Eight hundred. Am I bid eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Bid fifty. Eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Nine hundred thousand dollars. Nine hundred. Nine hundred. Nine hundred thousand dollars. Nine hundred. Nine hundred twenty.
baby. What are you doing home so soon? Thought you were going to be at the auction till late. I should be. What's wrong? What's wrong? Honey, what's happened? Don't look at me like that. What happened? What happened? What happened? I hope you're ready for this one because I have a fucking doozy. Guess what I realized while that painting was on the auction block? Guess. What? I'm listening to everyone bid on that fucking piece of shit. I'm all nervous as I'm listening to these bids. And I'm jingling the change in my pocket. And then I start wondering, where did I get this change? I don't remember having any change in my pocket when I left the house. And then I remember, when I came by here to pick up the painting, I saw it sitting there. I just picked it up. I didn't think a thing about it. And then I get this fucked up feeling in the pit of my stomach. I'm like, no fucking way. I'm listening to these guys bid a million dollars on that fucking painting. And I pull out this silver change from my pocket. Not a scratch. Not a scratch on one dime. Not even this 1962. Steve! You stupid fucking idiot! You stupid fucking whore! You forgot to pile the silver. <laughs> Didn't you? You more than fucked up, you stupid bitch! They're gonna know it's a fake in a matter of minutes! You forgot to put the silver in the paint! Beautiful, Rachel. What a whore you turned up. Mike, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll do another one. I'll do another one. I'll do another one. No, 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 no. There's not another... gonna be another one. Everybody knows. They're probably on the way here right now to blow our fucking heads off! You do not fuck with these people! Mike, I love you! I love you! Let's go away! We can run away! We can start over! Fuck, can we go? Answer one question for me. I'll do anything, Mike. We'll go somewhere. We'll run! Did you do this on purpose? No! Don't lie to me. Don't you fucking lie! I did it! I did it! It was an accident! Where do you keep your head? Where do you keep your fucking head? What the hell am I doing? I pick up a whore on the corner, what do I get? This is what I deserve, I guess. Mike, I love you! Please don't leave me! I've really proven that.
can't believe you fucking shot me. What are you thinking? I'll be on. You just rest now. We'll be at Mum's in a couple of hours. Good. Where can we stash the money? 